How important is the parent's role in developing children spiritually? Mm-hmm. So oftentimes I feel like parents, that they'll leave it for the church to do, but individually for parents, how important is it? Mm. I mean, it's critical. I think we would agree that parents are the primary disciples of their kids, which Mm, I would say first and foremost means parents need to be uh, godly examples to their kids. And they they don't like to hear this often because as parents, we want answers. What does the Bible say to make my child better and more obedient (laughs) and more godly? And the first answer is you You. need to be better, more obedient and godly. And so you've got your work cut out for you. I talk about the stewardship and the responsibility that you take on when you come, become a parent. Number one is uh, your life is uh, and implications of your life no longer just affect you, but they affect other people. Yeah. And your kids are watching you and learning from you. And in a big way, we model right. um, discipleship to our kids. Yeah. And so right. that's, that's step number one right. for being a a primary disciple in our children's lives, which certainly then we cannot delegate all the rest of it to the church. We, we sh- absolutely should bring our kids to church. We should bring them on Sundays. They should take priority over softball. Mm. Um, we should be at midweek events. We should yeah. have people in our homes. Right. The church should be in our home and home fellowship groups and, and all this stuff. Uh, but that doesn't replace the parent's responsibility to first model it and then to teach it. And there's, there's a lot we could say in terms of uh, teaching children um, what it means to follow Jesus yeah. and how to do that. There, there are formal ways that we do that in our home. We do family devotions. We pray, right? There, there are very kind of formal and structured ways that we answer that question. And then there are informal ways too, where on the go, you know, we're, we're, mm. we're teaching lessons. So 2 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, I, you, just, just to piggyback on that, and parents tend to fall off the wagon in one of two areas. Either A, as Mark said, they bring you their children and they say, fix my kid. Uh I love that answer. Mark is exactly right. The parent is the primary discipler and the best example to that children. Mm -hmm. Children are going to learn what to do and what not to do from their parents. Mm -hmm. Um, Unfortunately, if you grow up in a home where your parents aren't walking with the Lord, but the child gets converted, the child's going to learn what not to do from mom and dad. Parents need to make sure that they're first and foremost. I think the other way Christian parents fall off the wagon a little bit is they keep their children from the church. Mm-hmm. Sometimes in the homeschool community, it'll become such an, uh, an issue where the homeschool parents who are committed to discipling their children, who are committed to teaching their children the word of God, who are committed to uh, raising their children in the fear and admonition of the Lord, what they'll do is they'll actually pull, they'll get scared of the church sometimes. I don't want my child to go to the youth group. I don't want my child to be associated mm-hmm. with this. And what's, what the parents are actually doing when they're doing that is they're actually harming that child because they're taking the child away from the body of Christ. They're taking that child away from all of the equipping and uh, all of the fellowship, all of the, all of the things that happen within the life of the body. So I love Mark's answer. I think it's a really good balanced answer that yes, uh, parents are the primary disciples, but moms and dads don't keep Johnny or Susie from the fellowship of the local church. And if you don't feel like you can uh, keep your children connected in your local church, maybe it's time to consider going to a healthy Bible teaching church or reaching out to your pastor and, yeah. and asking to talk through some of these struggles that you're having. It, it's interesting hearing both of you, Mark and, and Ryan, talk, because you're both pastors. I'm not, I'm, I'm a professor at a seminary. So you guys see kids with their parents, and oftentimes the children are an indicator of the parenting that might be happening, I, w- I would assume, right? At a seminary level, I deal with just, say, the parents, those who are older, who are there for uh, a seminary education, sometimes they're recently saved and they haven't gotten the spiritual training they should at, at a church. So now they're in seminary getting an advanced course in, you know, uh, Romans or hermeneutic, hermeneutical theory, and it's like, you know, blowing their minds. They don't know what to do with it. But I see from that level when I'm, my a lot of my students are, they're, they're, older, obviously, you know, they're post-college, they're getting their master's degrees, sometimes advanced master's degrees, but they're parents. Um, And how often they lack a biblical worldview and a biblical literacy Mm -hmm. coming in. So Uh core classes like hermeneutics, 
that can be life-changing for a parent when they just understand how to properly interpret Scripture according to grammatical, historical context. When you do that, you go to these passages through Proverbs and, and Ephesians and elsewhere, what Paul says in the letters about how to raise ch children, how to be a good parent. It, it all boils down to hermeneutics. And all of a sudden now, they'll come to me afterwards in classes, and I'll even get them on surveys, how it helped them disciple their children at mm. home just having a correct hermeneutical method that they learn, say, in, in seminary. So I, I don't get to see the kids or, or, or the indicator that way. I see it from the parent side that are passionate about coming for I, biblical education. I see what you did it. there. You bridged the gap. You <laughs> did got, you see that? You got right there. the academy Bridging into parenting. Yeah, right, well, exactly. Let me, let me I got to offer off something that. here. And, and let me ask Mark, let me ask Mark, as a scholar, um, has your studies helped you mm -hmm. as a parent? Yeah. And, do, and do you think parents at Compass or other parents would benefit by going to CBI? Sure. And not necessarily focusing on how to parent, but also just fine tuning their own ability to handle God's word. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a couple layers to this answer that we could explore. At the first level, just to answer your question directly, absolutely. I mean, investing your time in learning hermeneutics or a survey of the New Testament mm. or whatever it may be is going to be super helpful mm -hmm. in your day-to-day -day wisdom and decision-making and parenting. That's what it is. It's just a series of, you know, solving problems and putting out fires and, you know, figuring it out as you go. And so it's absolutely going to be super helpful. But at the same time, I think parents hear this kind of part of our conversation and maybe get a little overwhelmed and stalled mm -hmm. out and thinking, I need to go and go to seminary and take a class on hermeneutics to be a parent. <laughs> like, mm. I'm just going to keep watching my YouTube videos because mm. that's more comfortable, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? And so I, I do think there's a bit of a balance here. And I, I tell people in my ministry and in my parenting class that I teach every year that you do not need to become an expert. You don't need to write a dissertation on parenting. You, you need to disciple your kids. Mm. And so how much do they know about the Bible? Mm. Like you, you need to be one step ahead of the hounds mm. in order to keep leading them. And if that's where you're at, if you're a new convert or if you're late to the game in trying to parent according to a biblical worldview, you don't need to go and get a terminal degree in the topic in order to start. Mm. You just need to start right. and you need to stay one step ahead of your children and keep discipling them. And so one of the ways I do family devotions is for formal instruction in my home is I read my Bible every day and our church does daily Bible reading. And so I read the daily Bible reading in the morning. And then uh, that's like usually a couple of chapters of the Old Testament and one chapter of the New Testament. And so I'll take one verse out of what I read and I'll sit down with my kids at breakfast and I'll read that verse and we'll talk about that verse and I'll ask questions about that verse We'll talk about what it means to apply that verse, and then we'll pray together for a few minutes. And the whole thing takes probably five minutes. Great. It's not rocket science, and it's not long. I'm not preaching a long sermon. Mm. Um, not exasperating that. Uh, yeah, yep. Right. Yep. Uh, it's, it's, they don't, and in fact, they, they don't hate it. Mm. They love it. Mm -hmm. They enjoy it. It's, it's short enough to be enjoyable. It's interesting enough. And, and I'm equipping them slowly over time with what the Bible says. And so I'm not trying to tackle all of the New Testament in one sitting. I'm trying to tackle one verse. Mm -hmm. And any dad out there could become an expert on one verse in one morning, you know, uh, within reason. And so I just say that to encourage parents to, yeah, take a seminary class. That would be great. Yeah. But in the before before, you know, week one and before you're done with your reading for assignment number one, read your Bible mm -hmm. and help walk walk that passage, uh, walk, walk your kids through that passage. If they, if, if more families, more parents were applying what you just said, it would make guys such as myself and yourself as a professor as well. And other professors at seminary, our job a little bit easier because we should be focused more on intellectual training and not so much the spiritual formation that should be happening in the church, in the home, in the local church. Yeah. Too often they come to seminary lacking that spiritual training they should be having at home and, and, and under, yeah. under pastoral care in the church.